Hello, my name is Song Min Moon. I will be graduating K-State next year with a chemical engineering degree, and I worked with RedGuard. Um, my grant were both P2, pollution, pollution prevention, and sustainable material management. For the presentation, I'll be talking about company introduction after this, and then I'll talk about, I'll start with the waste study follow-up, and all the way down to consultant recovery. Then I'll do have an overall summary, and then we'll talk about a little future projects that Red Light could work on, and then I have some acknowledgement and question after that. So, what is the Red Guard? As you can see in the name, they guard something. What do they guard? Well, they also say they rebuild. What do they build? This picture right over here is from March 23rd, 2005, the BP Texas City refinery explosion. The explosion was pretty significant not only because they killed 15 empl employees and injured 200 of them, this was the third largest refinery system in the United States. So it was pretty shocking to all who worked in this area that such thing could happen. So once that happened, uh, a lot of people figure out that there were some buildings that were not blasted. Like, oh, why, why that happened? The Red Guard took um, engineers and then some of the business workers see what we can do because formerly, in, they were founded in 1998. They formerly produced some of the lease units for the spaces, the storage. And then they said the shipping containers are a lot like what they have. And maybe we have some opportunity to create a safe space where the workers work for refinery and such have, such have um, um, they, could, they could prevent such events from happening. So this one of the model is called Gen 3, Generation 3. Blast resistant model and a blast proof. Blast proof is nearly impossible, but res blast resistance is possible. So that's what their buildings are. And there are a total five locations in Wichita area. They have many different locations throughout the state. And I mainly stationed at Production Center. And then I work with FC North, which is Fabrication North, Fabrication South, and High Plains Manufacturing for the LED and the air leak audits. Production roadmap. So uh, this is how Red Guard conducts their business. Um, how the customer reaches out to them or sales personnel reach out to them, they create a proposal and they got building quotes. Each buildings are decent size. It takes quite a long time. So they have a lengthy process of doing it. They do site study because each state have different code, building codes because they are buildings. They have to comply them. And sometimes customer may not know what they necessarily need. They do a full survey on the site study, then they design and they purchase the materials for that design, and then goes to the manufacturing process. They start with fabrication center, like FC South and FC North. They get the metal, different types of metals, and then they and they shape it and they weld it to the building shape, like we just saw. And then they go to the production center. Once they are welded, they blast it near white finish, and then they have paintings and they do floorings and then do installments on HVAC, electro uh, electronic units and light fixtures and everything like that. So it's like office building, but it's safe. And they do the on-site testing on their facility and they transport after all done to where the buildings are go. And then they may have on-site assistance to install and then to test and let the customers have it. So LG Exchange. Um, this project was recommended in 2019 and 2022 interns and PC, uh, PC site, production site recently um, exchanged it. They, they accept, they follow through our recommendations. Uh, they used to have about, um, they have six lamp T5 floors fixtures and they changed the LED fixtures. The LEDs were stacked out 200 watts with the 28, uh, 28,000 lumen. The, the major concern with the lighting is that it was not bright enough from the shops, that some shops are really old, they're old buildings, and they recently purchased. So a lot of a lot of workers, they said they have some uh, they are um, uncomfortable with some of the lighting that's too dark, and it's not too safe. So companies are aware of it. FC North just recently quoted to get a new light, so they're working toward it. But some of the some of the calculation they did was three years ago. So I wanted to update and so, and they just recently purchase some of the buildings like FC South um, and High Plains. So they didn't know any data from it. 
So I went on and updated some of the data for overall how much they would could save. So as you can see, this is a PC shop while they were um, changing the lights. On the left is old T5s and on the right is new LEDs. We can clearly see the new LEDs are much brighter. And waste profile. Um, so to do that, I worked on the analyzing all the energy bills from PC and high plains FC South. The reason I do FC North, it was a lease unit, so I'll not be able to get actual data from it. Um, from analyzing the energy bill, I was able to find it's about for electrical usage, it's about five cents per kilowatt hour for those two facilities, and for about a cent, or less than a cent for the FC South. And I want to mention briefly a power factor. Power factor is basically talk about efficiency or how the electric or electricity are used in the facility. I have no, I have learned that on the PC there's a two different type generator. One is old, one is new. The new one does all the different types of um, air compressors, blast boost, paint boost, uh, some of the office building print, um, computers, whatnot. And their efficiency is about 75%, similar to high points manufacturing place. So for the future, uh, just a reference, they might want to look into the, how the electricity is going through the facility to improve the power factor, which will decrease the electrical uh, usage and price. Nonetheless, um, this is the general equation that I used to figure out how how um, how would cost, how much they save. So it's number of fixtures times the wattage of each fixtures, then the total work hours, and then how much it costs per kilowatt hour for energy demand. I also figure out the total cost of the light usage. For old PC side, we assume there's 120 fixtures. I see I already changed it. I could not really get out any data for it. Um, and then we're able to, we're able to define that in per per annual with the nine shift a nine hour shift they can have five thousand dollars and then LEDs with the currently seventy fixtures they are able to they use about eighteen hundred uh, kilowatt dollars for electrical usage. So for a simple payback period to exchange that, I actually got hold of their actual purchase order and it was fourteen thousand dollars and subtracting the annual savings. It was average of 4.7 years. As a reminder, that potentially go up for 24 hour, three shifts. Um, right now, they're only doing one shift for many reasons, but I'll talk about that a little more in the next slide. Uh, so for overall, there's about 379 fixtures. Redguard is recommended to change average 58 fixtures because the LED has a uh, higher lumen output with, with lesser bulbs. So it's, it's, it's not it's not um, it's not smart to exchange four hundred percent. Some some of the percentage are different because of the height and depends on the operation that they do. And from the overall investment, forty four thousand dollars, they were able to uh, save annually about hundred fifty uh, six about six thousand. And and the the overall. Uh, SPP, which is a simple payback period, 6.5. And this, this calculation is based on nine hour, one shift, eight hours of work, half hour lunch, and half hour preparation. And from this one shift, um, Redgar is able to save 148 metric tons of CO2. And for 24 hours, three shifts, um, the annual saving is about $15,000 and $358,000 kilowatt hour for 28, uh, 2.8 year simple payback period. Um, now we go back to waste. So 2021 intern worked greatly on this, uh, identifying what type of waste the company have and try to eliminate some of the waste. She majorly focused on the wood waste, uh, plywood, OSB and pallets and cardboard waste because they do have a lot of packaging. Some of the equipments, so our HVAC units or refrigerators or whatnot, they are common, they're common crates or cardboards. So he tried to work and reduce them. And we can see from the fabrication center, there's always metals, metal sheets, um, some cut off because some buildings are certain size, certain lengths, they cannot really utilize it. So that's also the waste over there. There's some unused, unexpired and expired paint from the painting process. There's some um, Blast media from the blast um, blast process, 
uh, flooring is the wood, OSB board, sometimes FRPs, and installments have plastic or piping or electrical cords, anything like that, and packaging. Mainly it talks about the wraps they do. They have plastic wraps or what because they have to transfer from the Wichita area to all across the United States. They require some type of protection for the buildings. So the intern focused on the wood and cardboard. I followed up why um, some of the implementation was not possible. It's because due to the fact that Red Guard, variety type of projects, each project are custom designed, which means different type unique in each. They use different type of paint, a different type of wood, a different type of metals. So that creates really hard for the Red Guard to have estimate annually or monthly how much they would use. So, a, so first of that, and second of that, there's not much place that likes to have used woods. Um, we try to donate universities or some of the habit, human for habitat. They wanted to have some standardized numbers, standardized um, types of the um, re, uh, reclaimable woods. Uh, we will not be able to provide that because due to the fact they have so many different custom projects. Um, so I think companies should invest more time or hire someone who can focus on the waste stream and try to figure out from there to all the way up so they can limit the purchasing overall. But as of it is for right now, we're not able to do that. Air leak survey. So this also was firstly introduced in 2019. This is a follow-up um, follow study. We I identified the, there's compressed air used in blast area, painting area, and air breathing system where they wear um, PPEs when they do blast or paint and do foaming for the flooring. And there's also some metal work, the plasma cutters, they may use some airs. So the result, there was about 32 leakage in three different facilities. The major leakage was happening in the breeder box where the uh, PPEs were and plasma cutter lubricant distributors. And they were the largest for um, large area detected. And the ma majority of leaks were hose connection, either hose are damaged, they're old, some of the sealant is uh, coming off because how they are used. And from this project, I was under, I able to identify about 9,000, uh, nine, <laughs> around about $10,000 in annual environmental saving for 382 kilowatt hour and 370 uh, metric tons of CO2 emissions. Now, uh, Redgar also worked hard for 10 years to change the media from 2016, since the EPA had recommended to remove, not to use some of the sand blasting media because it causes the illness. So Redgar looked at three options and they decided to use with Black Beauty, um, which is the cold flag. Cold flag is currently used. However, they are cursed. They have some major health concerns. 10 out of 11 components are carcinogenic. They are metal oxides. They're not good for your health. Um, they do not have a reclaiming system or a collecting system. Basically, when they're blasting, things, the wind may pick it up and bring it to the shop area. Um, also, they, they, they are one-time usage. So they scoop it all up and throw it and the waste bill mounts up every, every month. So they should, they are considering to change it. However, to do so, they try to change the steel grids, which is reclaimable, reusable multiple times. It, it requires a huge capital investment. So that's the only reason they are a little bit hesitant, but they want to move forward. Um, and this study helps them to justify. Okay. Um, for steel grids, the reusable one for Gen 3 building that we just we the, it showed in the first presentation, um, the, the red building over there. I, the reason that I use that as a standard is because, again, they have custom projects. Every, every project has different sizes of buildings, different types of buildings. This Gen 3 building is um, one of the least new that Red Guard owns, and they make about 40, uh, 56 buildings annually. So I use that as standard. To, so to blast one, one Gen 3 buildings, they use about 2.6 tons. And each ton is about $3,000. And uh, all metal recycling, they purchase all the media after it's used. So if they're not be able to reclaim and reuse because they do get 
chipped off and the efficiency goes low, they will purchase them. So the total blasting cost will be two thousand um, twenty five hundred dollars for one single gen three building. The coal site, however, they are purchased for a single building. They buy around uh, three hundred and fifty five dollars, and then it it costs about seventy two dollars to dispose per ton, and for each 11 tons, they have to dispose a run to change out the um, bin because they're too heavy. So I implement all that. So, and so the cost is about, so in first time implementing them from steel grids uh, to steel grids, they, they do lose about $15,000. However, after about 50 reclaims over there, they, they save they save about $40,000, which is pretty good. Uh, steel grids are, are able to reclaim uh, 50 plus times, some, sometimes 200 plus. So a company should study a little bit more on how much they can actually reclaim it while they use it. But this shows that for uh, 50 Gen 3 buildings, they are able to save um, two, uh, 200, two, 2.66 metric uh, CO2 emissions and 4.81 metric tons of CO2 by reclaiming each time. Okay. This talks about the rain shelter. One of the things the intern talked about, uh, previous intern talked about, is the extra debris that happened during the blast process and the current bin sitting out there and they collect all the rain and adds up the waste. So from the study, I was figured out that I was, I was found that it adds about $2,000 annual per annually and the company could use other transit paper they already have, make a, make a roller or build a roller that they have, they have metal frames, they can just roll it all up there and then bring it out to the waste bin on top of it to collect the rain or to, to um, prevent rain to come in there and in, in, add the waste, or they can build a shelter. They have a sister company called Metador and they create shelter for them. Or we can use a removal, a removal cover that able to remove the forklift to pick it up and put it down to, get, um, to prevent any rain to come in. I recommend to use the removal rain cover is four thousand dollars, but the invest uh, the simple payback period is about two point one year, so it pays itself within two years. I think it's pretty reasonable. Last but not least, solvent recovery. So when I first came in, they used solvent recovery system already, which is pretty nice, but they were not running efficiently. Uh, they're not running efficiently. The overall efficiency was about seventy five percentage, and they are running at 293 Fahrenheit when the recommended temperature is about 253 Fahrenheit. Uh, I saw some signs that outlets can overheat because it was too hot. Um, the machine is not getting cooled down on time because it's too hot and it, the room itself is, there's no AC, but they do have airflow. So it's only the airflow and the room temperature is cooling the machine. So it has difficulty on that. So overall, I decided to work on some temperature and how much input that affects the overall process. Um, this is how I experimented. The machines over there, they discharge to the, originally to the bunk, the funnel over there. And one of the major losses that I found is that the, mm -hmm. it happens during the cleaning and storage and distillery. Uh, average about 90 gallons are lost during the evaporation from the open containers like that over there. And it is going on duration of five hours, but with the current 200, 293 Fahrenheit, after a third hour, none of the, none of the solvent was distilling, so it's really inefficient. Um, to minimize the evaporation, I recommended to use lid container and red card part shifted. Right now they have a little problem. Uh, the lid is not really working well because they have liners to protect the bucket mm -hmm. and they have to use a clamp and the clamp is not working really well. However, just putting the lid on top of it will save a lot. So from the solvent recovery, um, initial thought was that changing temperature, so lowering the temperature will increase the yield and the managing the operation time also to increase the yield. But that was not the case. It was actually that more you put in, the more inlet, because the machine itself is 17.5 gallon of capacity. So if you put about 15 gallon um, which is three times of cleaning because they use five gallons to clean each time. They were able to increase the input, but 85% to 82% uh, 
our our goal is to have ninety percent. So the calculation is based on that. Um, so overall, if we are if we are able to use the lid, we would able to find uh, save ninety gallons and changing the machine, optimizing to 75% currently to 90%, we'll say about 165 gallons of MEK. And then fixing the discharge system, fixing the funnel, because funnels are moving, they're not stationary. So I was not able to collect all the data for how much leakage is occurring, but just able to minimize that, we could save about 3.9 gallons per annum. And we could organize the mixer to maximize the airflow and there's a lot of stuff on the floor that could be a trip hazard. So we get rid of that. So overall, we were able to save about $4,000, 259 gallons of MK and 1,000 pounds of 17,000, uh, 700 pounds of VOC. Overall, I, uh, from changing LED, we could find $6,700 and air leak about $10,000. Um, blast media about forty thousand dollars, solar recovery eleven thousand dollars, overall seventy thousand dollars for a total project. Um, for the future purposes, the Red Guards are working on the quality of the overall quality of their company. They're working on the quality of the product right now, but they want to move forward and working on the, each process as well. And I recommend, as the previous interns worked on, like having some training materials, have some standards. Um, to work on to improve. And for the paint booth, there's a lot of potential there. They use the manometer to determine the pressure difference between the paint filter in front and behind. Uh, right now, the, it's not really functioning very well. So it's probably worth to invest on. It doesn't take that long to figure it out. Um, so there are also the issues of paint quality recently. Some of the paints were, because the room is not temperature controlled, they're running at room temperature. There are some issues with some numbers that company provides. Some are not really matching. So they need, they want to study and work on uh, how the temperature and the humidity affects of their product and why is it, why there's a problem or if there any else this problem is. As previously mentioned, there's a power factor that can improve. Anything lower 80% is considered low power factor. So they want to increase it up to 90% if possible. Uh, before I end, I want to acknowledge all the BPI mentors and regular employees who helped me go through all these type of projects and fellow interns who helped me out late night when I have questions. <laughs> That's a work side page. Thanks for the presentation. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Um, yes. What did you like best about your internship? I learned a lot. Uh, my discipline is chemical engineering, not only really industrial or environmental. So I had to learn a lot of the lean management or some of the environment impact, how to analyze the energy bills and whatnot. So it was all new. So I had to learn on site. And I learned a lot talking to the actual person who worked on the present on the shop floor and talking to the management and how their views are a little different mm -hmm. and to to under, to explain to them what they're thinking and how they're thinking was pretty interesting to how to work on it, yeah. And mm -hmm. I think uh, out of these projects, most of them you see are in progress. Uh, like, do, you, do you think like our plans are implementing them soon? So I know the LED, or at least for one facility, they're working toward um, to get it. They already have coded. So they're, they're planning to implement it on next year. So I don't know about the other two facilities that's recently purchased, but I have the saving analysis to uh, show them like, the reason why they should do it. And the, the blast media uh, using the steel grids, is that something that they're already working on at, a, at another facility? Yes. So one of the facilities use steel grids. However, they do have manual collection system. So it's not the same as what the PC is looking forward, but they want to move forward because again, this is huge saving cost for the disposal and also the environment impact. So they they definitely want to move forward. And is it an expensive first cost to get the- At first, system? yes. 
for the first time, it will be cost, it will adapt, uh, I don't know the exact economical term, but investment cost will be pretty large in front. But from depending on how much their production, if they have high production rate, they'll pay up within a few years. It should be reasonable. Okay. 